Dr. Fizz, theoretical physics, eigenvalues, eigenvectors, eigenstates. Here we have two spinners, one which we designate as spin up with the one up top and the zero down the bottom. And here is spin down, which is a zero and a one. This is very important in our study of the electron because the electron has intrinsic angular momentum called spin, which can only take on two values. Very, very nicely represented with the mathematics of spinners. Here let's look at SU2 matrices such as the Pauli matrices that can act on these spinners and let's see what happens. We will consider first the X Pauli matrix 0, 1, 1, 0 and have it operate on this spinner 1, 0. Well, 0 times 1 plus 1 times 0 is 0. 1 times 1 plus 0 times 0 is 1. What happens to the spin down state? when the Pauli matrix sigma sub x works on it. Well, here's your spin down state. Let's do it. 0 times 0 plus 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 0 plus 0 times 1 is 0. So you see the sigma x takes the up state and knocks it down, and the sigma x takes the down state and knocks it up. So it basically flips the states. What about sigma sub y? Well, sigma sub y is 0 minus i, i 0. And the up state is the 1, 0. We already have looked at before with the x case. And let's just do it. 0 times 1 plus minus i times 0 is 0. i times 1 plus 0 times 0 is i. And I bring the i out, factor it out. Sigma y acting on the down state. 0 times 0 plus negative i times 1 is negative i. I bring it out. i times 0 plus 0 times 1 is 0. Once again, the up state has been knocked down here and this state has been flipped up. But we have uh, coefficients here in the front. We don't expect the uh, physics to be different with these two cases, x and y. So let's look at these coefficients in a little more detail. Well, if you look at the Euler's rule, the Euler's uh, formula, e to the i theta is cosine theta plus i sine theta. So if you have pi over 2, like 90 degrees here, then cosine of 90 is zip, and the sine of 90 is 1, and multiplied by the i, there it is. So the i can be replaced by this exponential. And if you uh, look at negative i, simply have negative pi over 2 for your angle. These are called phase factors and the physics does not depend on this because where is the physics? This is a spin down state. This is a spin up state. In other words the probability that this is spin up is zero because it's spin down. The probability here it's down is one. The probability that this state is up is one because it's a spin up state. So I see the one zero here, the one zero here. I see the zero one here and I see uh, that I had the zero one there. It's these phases that are different and it suggests here, the mathematics suggests to keep the physics the same, that you should interpret your probability as C1 star C1. Now let's, let's look at this. C1 here is zero. C2 here is the phase factor. Well C1 star C1 is zero. Well C1 is zero so there's no problem there. It's zero probability. But this is the one I'm after because I have the phase factor here, and above I had the nice, I had the nice, uh, the nice one, zero and the one without the phase factor. So this is what I'm trying to recover the same physics that's up here. So if I look at this and take c2 star c2, when you star this thing, you'll put a minus sign there, and then if you multiply by it without the star, you'll get e to the zero of the power, which is one. Well, that's nice because that will be the same physics because the probability that here we're down is 1 and by doing this C star C rule then this has a 1 for the downness and a 0 for the upness just like this has and that's what's done in quantum mechanics uh, that is the way to look at the probabilities. Let's consider the special case here the Pauli matrix in the Z direction and that's 1, 0, 0, minus 1, so 1 times 1 plus 0 times 0 is 1, 0, 1 plus minus 1, 0, 0. It doesn't change the state. The spin up 
stays spin up. Here, if you operate on the down state, you have 1 times 0 plus 0 times 1 is 0, and 0 times 0 plus negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. Now, this state did not change its orientation. Now, we do have a minus sign out in front, but the main thing is that this state here is preserved. It's still spin up, and this is still spin down. In fact, if we use our C star C rule, then when we multiply, you know, minus 1 times the star, well, minus 1 times minus 1 is all you're going to get. It's plus 1, so this is simply telling me the probability is 1, that this is indeed a down state, and the probability here that this is an up state is indeed 1. When this happens, we, uh, w when this happens, we get the same state back with the plus or minus sign or, or some coefficient in front. We say that this state is an eigenstate for this operator and the number in front, the plus one or the minus one, that is the eigenvalue. So this state up is state up with the plus one in front. This is state down over here with the minus. So the eigenstates are one zero and zero one with the eigenvalues plus one and minus one respectively. Here's the general rule of some operator A operating on a spinner. You get the same spinner back with lambda then this spinner that came back is called the eigenvector, the eigenstate, or the eigenspinner, and the lambda that's in front is the eigenvalue. Let's find the eigenstates and eigenvalues for the sigma x operator. Well, we set it up this way. We have the eigenstate must come back, and there's some lambda there. So we have 0, 1, 1, 0 times the eigenstate. Let's bring the same eigenstate back with some lambda. How do we solve this thing? Well, here's a nice trick. Insert the identity matrix here, 1, 0, 0, 1. So I can see a 2 by 2 explicitly on each side of the equation. Then if I subtract this right-hand side from both sides of the equation, I can see my lambda hits my diagonals here, these diagonal components. So when I subtract, I'll get minus lambda, minus lambda along the diagonals, and the 1, 1 here on the off diagonals. Well, how do I solve this equation? Actually, this is a pair of equations because it has two unknowns, C1 and C2. Minus lambda C1 plus C2 is 0, and 1 times C1 minus lambda C2 is 0. Well, reminiscent of the old days going back to algebra in high school, we have here two equations with two unknowns. X and Y are the unknowns, and these are your two equations. We can represent this pair of equations very nicely by a matrix A, B, C, D, and the column vector X, Y, and the column vector E, F. Watch, A times X plus B times Y is equal to E. C times X plus D times Y is equal to F. Now, the way you would solve this in algebra class, if you didn't know Kramer's rule, this trick that we're going to be looking at, you would solve one of these for Y, and then substitute the Y in there to get an equation with just X, and then crank out the solution. You will get this nice result, ED minus BF over AD minus BC, and this, in Kramer's rule, a identifies these as determinants. If you take your master matrix here, A, B, C, D, make a determinant, take the determinant of it, A, B, C, C, D, be A times D minus B, C. See, that's the determinant. And that's in the denominator in each case. When you solve for X and Y, you get these uh, solutions. And notice you can get the numerator expressed as a determinant. If you take this uh, a, B, C, D, and kick out the A, C, because that's the first uh, column is goes with X, and replace it with E, F. And then for the Y, kick out the B, D, and replace it with E, F. Very, very elegant, and that gives you your solution. Well, um, I don't want to get too excited here because I have an immediate problem here. Uh, my unknowns here are, are C1 and C2. That's like my X and my Y. But look what I have for my constants, E and F, zero. This is not good because 0 times D minus 0 times F is 0. A times 0 minus C times is 0. So everything is 0? Well, maybe here there's hope because if the denominator 
should happen to be zero then have zero over zero who knows what happens then so in desperation in hope of a solution I'm going to insist that this determinant vanish which is uh, the master C determinant down here and see if I can get a solution for eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So let's do it. The determinant here must vanish. I get lambda squared minus 1 equals 0 and I solve. I get lambda squared, squared equals 1. Lambda is plus or minus 1 and there are my eigenvalues and to find the eigenvectors I then set up my eigenvector problem and explicitly replace the lambda with plus 1 and minus 1 and work it out. So for the first uh, eigenvector, the plus 1 case, I have 0 times C1 plus 1 times C2 is C2 and 1 times C1 plus 0 times C2 is C1 and that must equal the same thing back with the plus 1 eigenvalue which means the uh, C's uh, are equal, C1 equals C2. So I can find a solution really quickly, 1, 1, 1 over square root of 2 in front so that I get the probability to be 1 half for spin up and 1 half for spin down. Remember the C1 star C1 rule for the probability if I'm spin up and since C1 is real I just simply square it. And I square this to get 1 half, this is 1 half up here, 1 half down there. So the probability that the spin is up is 1 half, the probability of spinning down is 1 half. If I look for my negative eigenvalue solution, I do the same thing. 0 times C1 plus 1 times C2 is C2 again. And 1 times C1 plus 0 times C2 is C1 again. But now that has to equal minus the same thing back, C1, C2. So I find that the coefficients must be negative of each other. So I immediately get the solution uh, 1 minus 1 with the normalization factor of 1 over square root of 2 so that when I use my C1 star C1 rule I get a half of the probability that I'm spin up and when I use the rule for the spin down and since these are real coefficients I just simply square it uh, negative 1 over square root of 2 squared is 1 half so once again the probability that spin up is 1 half and down is 1 half. Notice that these two eigenvectors, the one, the u one I found earlier with the 1 and 1 plus sign and 1 minus 1, these are orthogonal, perpendicular to each other. If you think of these vectors here, this is the like i hat and the j hat, then you have 1 times 1 plus 1 times minus 1 is equal to 0. In other words, taking the dot product where you multiply the x components and the y components and add them together. Well, for a practice problem, it's good that you work out the algebra of solving two equations with two unknowns. So here we have the master matrix that gives us our two equations, a11 times x plus a12 times y is equal to c1. a21 times x plus a22 times y is equal to c2. And Kramer's rule, very beautiful, says that you make this master matrix into a determinant. You, you calculate the determinant of that master matrix down here in the denominator in each case for your solution for x and y. And for the numerator, you knock out the first column and replace it with c1, c2 for x. And for the y, you knock out the second column of your master um, matrix here and replace it with c1, c2. And that gets you your solutions for x and y. Very nice. If you go to three equations with three unknowns, things are not so simple. You have things called cofactors and things get more complicated. But for the two by uh, two a matrix here, for the uh, two equations with two unknowns, it's quite a nice, uh, simple, elegant solution.